Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Silver Stock Investor. This uh, episode, I'd like to talk about um, $18 in silver and uh, explore whether that has been the bottom or not in the silver price. What we've been dealing with is uh, the first global pandemic in over 100 years when um, the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020. And so what that did was it caused inf investors to flock to precious metals. Silver is obviously proven um, as a safe haven. It's also an incredible inflation hedge. And in the first two months after the COVID pandemic hit, the world actually allocated over $10 trillion in economic stimulus. This chart shows the reaction by major countries, including Germany, Japan, France, the UK, the US, Canada, India, South Africa, and Brazil. So the blue circles are the reaction to the COVID-19 pandemic as a percentage of those countries' GDPs. And that compares to the black circles, which are the reaction in terms of stimulus um, towards the global financial crisis that was from 2008-2009. So as you can see, in each case, the reaction by these countries was much, much larger economically uh, compared to their GDP if you compare this reaction of the to the pandemic versus the global financial crisis. So what did that do? Well, it certainly caused silver to soar from its low of about $12 in March of 2020. It reached nearly $30 in August. So in that five-month period, it soared 150% compared to gold, which did also very well and soared about 40%. Since then, it's been in a trading range of about $21 to $29, and actually just recently sold off um, below $21 down to just over $18, and I'll get into why that is um, in the next couple of slides. Since the pandemic hit, U.S. inflation went from nearly zero in early 2020 to 9.1%, in just a span of two years, um, that's uh, something that many thought was all going to go back to normal, disappear. But um, as we can see, and as the Fed finally caved and realized and admitted that um, this, these high inflation rates are certainly not transitory. Current rates in the U.S. inflation at 9.1% are near 40-year highs. At 8.1% in Canada, also near 40-year highs. Uh, so the reaction by the Fed was to start raising interest rates to help fight inflation and cool, uh, cool the inflation and the economy to somewhat, uh, to some extent, including uh, demand and so on. So rates are currently at 2.25%. The latest increase was 0.75% just uh, this past week. And we're nearing the rate, uh, the last, the high of the last rate hiking cycle in uh, 2019. So as I say, the Fed started to raise rates in March from near zero to 2.25% today. Higher rates have hurt stocks and bonds because higher rates now compete with stocks and longer term bonds. The higher rates made the US dollar more attractive and it also made short term bonds more attractive. What happened too, though, is that the stronger dollar dented silver, gold, and commodities, uh, since the stronger dollar uh, means you need less dollars to buy the same commodity, which is priced in dollars. I think, though, that we might be nearing the end of the rate hikes. Uh, we are at very high odds of recession. Technically, with a, an economic contraction in the U.S. of minus 1.6% in the first quarter and minus 0.9% in the second quarter, as I say, technically, we are in a recession. The Fed, however, uh, has yet to um, to ag agree to that, uh, perhaps um, a little bit like their um, hesitation on calling the um, calling in inflation transitory until they really couldn't uh, um, admit otherwise and, and eventually caved and admitted that it was not going away. So on this rate hike, silver actually soared from about $18 to $20 in the span of a couple of days. And so uh, it may be a new rally, uh, kicking off a new rally in the silver price, uh, since the market perhaps is uh, looking at the Fed's reaction and seeing that as nearing the end of its rate hiking cycle. 
I've been saying since um, several months, in fact, that silver could bottom near $18. The reason I was calling $18 as a potential bottom is because it's the all-in cost to produce an ounce of silver. I, there are two aspects, silver, industrial, and investment demand. And I think steady but growing industrial demand, which represents about 50% of all silver demand, will help to keep a rising floor under the silver price. But I think it's investment demand that's going to help push the silver price much, much higher in the next months and years. And I think that by the end of this year, we could already potentially be looking at um, a $24 to $25 silver price. $24 is just 20% higher than uh, where we are right now. If we step back for a moment and we look at how silver has performed since 2000, so the last 22 years, silver actually gained an average of 9.49% annually ever since uh, the turn of the century. So we do know that um, historically when the Fed stops raising rates or even starts to cut rates, potentially going to be the case with a, a recession looming uh, ahead, precious metals usually take off. And so I expect silver to perform strongly as inf inflation continues to outpace um, inflation rates. And as I say, this could be as little as just a few months away. If we look at uh, what happened to silver since uh, late 2018, when silver was about $14, we're currently up 42% since then. So that's uh, not bad in the last uh, uh, four years and uh, continues to uh, meet the average of about uh, 9 to 10% uh, annual return on silver since 2000. These are all things I talk about in detail in my, my new book, The Great Silver Bowl. It's available on Amazon. It's been a bestseller since its uh, launch about um, two and a half months ago. It's available in paperback and in Kindle. And um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, latest episode. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to know more, you can go to silverstockinvestor.com. Thank you.